Hello everyone, this is lesson six of unit one for physics 30. Uh, today we're going to look at 2D conservation of momentum. Now there's sort of two ways of looking at 2D conservation of momentum, both of which will require a very simple principle. And that simple principle is that momentum is conserved in the x coordinate and momentum is conserved in the y coordinate. And we really, in both, in both methods, we're really just separating out the x and the y coordinates and keeping track of that momentum. In this method, it's the tail to tip method, this, is that, this separating of the x and y is kind of done for us because what we can see based on our lesson, um, hopefully you can recall, is that if you have two objects colliding um, and one of them is in the y coordinate only and one of them is in the x coordinate only we can just add these vectors together tail to tip and that will give us the the resultant if you like of the two momentums together uh, in this particular example here we're, we're regarding a, a hit and stick so these two balls are coming together they're sticking together and then moving um, in off in their momentum at a particular angle. And this is again based on our conservation of momentum. We're saying the total momentum initial is the same as the total momentum final, or in other words, the total momentum momentum prime. And so we can add these two vectors together, tail to tip, because we have a right angle, because they're at right angles, add them together, and that's going to give us our resultant. One thing to just think about when you're doing this is whether or not the system is isolated. And in most of these situations, we're going to be in a, in a very simplified physics situation where, where that we can say that, yes, the system is isolated. OK, there are no external forces coming into the system. There are no external forces going out of the system. If I was to draw a circle around my system here, there would be no engine pushing the ball or there would be no friction that would be taking energy out of this circle. So this, this is a isolated system. OK, so let's take a look at the example. So we have two objects moving towards each other at right angles. We're given the mass of a car moving west. So here it is. There's the car moving west. Uh, we're given the speed of that car. We can assume that that's uniform motion. It's going to collide with a, a, mass, a, a truck that has a particular mass that we're given. This truck is moving north. So here it is. And there's the velocity of that truck. If they stick together, so this is a hit and stick, um, then we need to find out the final velocity. Remember that velocity is a vector, so we need the magnitude and the direction. Quite often people forget that direction and they think they're done, but they're not quite done because they forgot the angle. Don't forget the angle. All right, so we're going to do our tail to tip method. Uh, I'm going to use green for the car because the car seems to be green in this, in this picture. Um, I'm going to just literally add these two vectors together, tail to tip. And it doesn't really matter which way I do it. Um, let's do the well let's do the truck first so the truck is coming this way north and i can go ahead and work out its momentum so p let's call it p of the truck just make a bit more space here okay so p of the truck is going to be mv and if i do that calculation I get three zero four zero zero kilogram meters per second. And for the car, momentum of the car, if I do that calculation, uh, so mass times velocity, I get seventeen zero four zero kilogram meters per second. Okay. Uh, let's put these values onto my my diagram. So this is going to be three zero four zero zero. I'm going to leave the units off for now, but uh, it's a good habit to keep those units on. I'm just going to keep it simple here, leave them off, and then my 
green arrow, my car vector arrow, remember has to go tail to tip. So the tail has to begin at the tip of the red arrow, and that means that it's going to go this way, okay? And it's going to be 17, 0, 4, 0. Okay, so the momentum, let's go momentum of the car, plus the momentum of the truck is going to equal the total momentum of the car and truck together okay so this is my momentum initial or oh, my total momentum here it's going to be equal to my total momentum prime my my final momentum and so i can do my resultant vector arrow here this is the beginning this is the end tail to tip this is going to be my angle, and I'm just going to go ahead and work this out. Uh, hopefully you can see I'm going to use Pythagoras' theorem. A squared plus B squared e equals C squared. If this is C, and these are A and B, that's a pretty straightforward calculation. Um, what do I get? If I do this, I get total momentum to be 3... Four, eight, four, nine, decimal nine, oops, nine, eight, seven, something. Okay, so that's my total momentum. Remember that I'm trying to find velocity. So I, all I have to do now is figure out, so if I know my moment, my total momentum, that's going to be equal to the mass of the truck and the car together. And I'm going to have to multiply that by the velocity of the truck and car. So to get my velocity, so my velocity of the truck, oops, truck, car, I need to go momentum divided by the mass. So P truck car divided by mass truck car <laughs> could have probably made that simpler and that's basically going to give me 11.2 or 11 decimal two that's the speed okay but remember i need the direction as well so i've got my speed i've got my magnitude there it is 11 decimal two meters per second now i need that angle well um there's my angle this is going to be this B side is opposite the angle, and this A side is adjacent to the angle. And so those are my two values that I know for sure, because I've made a very simple calculation here and here. So I'm going to say that tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. In other words, this 1700... 17.040 over 30400. And so inverse tan of this fraction is going to give me the angle. So the angle ends up being 29 decimal 3 degrees. And if I think about my Cartesian plane, this is west, this is north, that angle is coming from the north so it's going this way from this arrow this direction so it's going to be west of north okay so that's 29 decimal three west of north that's my angle which is my direction okay example two is a little bit more qualitative we just have to show uh, a vector triangle that illustrates this conservation of momentum. So just remember that momentum has to be conserved in the x and the y. So momentum in the x total has to equal momentum in the x total final has to be conserved. And the same with the y. So we're always going to keep track of the before and after total momentums in the x and the y. Okay, so I'm going to do a little analysis before the collision. So let's go B 
before, and we'll do a before and, and after. I'm going to use green for after. Okay, so before the collision, object one, let's call this object one, is heading south. And object two is just at rest right there. Okay, after the collision, object two is heading east, it's going this way, and object one, well, object one must be going somehow this way. How do I know that? Well, because I have to keep track of my conservation in the x and my conservation in the y. Be the, at the beginning of this situation, there was some momentum in the y direction. So, Knowing that ball number two is now only in the x direction, my y momentum can't just disappear, it has to be conserved. So I know that ball one must have some component that is in the y direction. In addition, I also know that there was no x, there was zero x momentum before, so there must be a net of zero x momentum afterwards so i can look at my i can look at this x momentum this can't just appear out of nowhere so there must be a component of ball one or object one that must be going the equal and opposite direction to the momentum in ball two okay so i can now use my tail to tip skills to put this together so let's go ahead and do a before vector. Okay, so my before vector is going to be going dead south. This is the total momentum before. Okay, and this will include, I'm just going to put this in brackets, this is for ball one and for ball two. Okay, because the ball two has nothing and ball one is entirely going south. Okay. Now I can put my, um, my, my after vectors on. And if you like, if it's probably a good way to think about this, is that the, this before vector is essentially the, the resultant of these two here. So I'm going to now do in green to match the after. I'm going to put my um, ball one here and then tail to tip my ball two here. Okay, so this is a tail to tip. This is the momentum of one prime. Okay, and this is the momentum of two prime. Okay, and since I have no values, this question is not asking me to analyze it, but hopefully you can see I have a triangle now. So I could potentially go ahead and analyze for, um, for angles if I knew the values. But this skill is really, really important. What's, what's fundamental to this? Well, it's fundamental that we think about the x's and y's being conserved. And then when we do our vector diagram, we're going to assume that one of these before and afters is going to make up the resultant. And then the tail to tip method helps us analyze the rest of this.